Happy Solstice and welcome to Town Meeting TV. I'm here with Emily Brewer, I'm Lauren Glendividian, and we have a lovely evening of, we're having a party, which you may be able to see for the solstice, and it's a lot of people have it's come. a lot of people, it's a great turnout. I'm super pleased. I'm gonna let you do a little um, bit of a recap, and then team. we're gonna have um, our awards with the Neighborhood Media Interns. It's an exciting show, so stay tuned. Thank you, Lauren Glenn. And she's absolutely right when she says we've had a fantastic year here at CCTV and Town Meeting TV. Um, Town Meeting TV has continued to shine a light on local democracy. This was a big election year for us. We had a bunch of forums for the general, the primary and the general elections. And um, we're making good project progress with our CCTV archives. We've digitized about half of our collection, which is super exciting. And, and um, the Vermont Language she's Justice absolutely Project has right been making when great strides. Um, they continue to record and translate important public health messaging in 16 languages, and their YouTube channel has over 80,000 views now, which is very exciting. Hi, my name is Olivia, and I've been in an internship for three years now, and my experience has been so fun, especially like getting to learn a lot in our community and having different people, and that's, so we basically just speak like. Uh, different subjects like uh, every week that we want to talk about and just go outside, record, and after that we'll discuss about it. Yeah, so that's been a very, very cool. good experience. My name is Navarro and I think what I really like about the media, in media internship is um, getting to speak to people of our community that I normally don't hear from, as well getting to talk with like all the really amazing people here like Travis and you and stuff has just been really educational for me um, and just will help me in the future a lot and also like getting to introduce segments and learning how to like talk on television and stuff has been really interesting um, and yeah it's been a great amazing experience all right stay tuned <laughs> yes stay tuned Navarro's gonna stay on with me and um, it we're gonna bring over thank you so much we're gonna bring over Travis and um, Travis is um, what would you describe Travis as he's your internship coordinator um, our <laughs> our ringleader of sorts <laughs> is to say, and here he is now. Hello. hello, hello, hello. How are you doing? I am doing absolute fantastically tastic because I'm with Travis Washington, our CCTV internship coordinator. My first question for you, Travis Washington, uh, is what was your favorite memory working with CCTV this year? You know, um, it has always been, <laughs> like, working with the interns and with all y'all has always been great, mainly because, I mean, y'all are so insightful yet intuitive, and you always come up with brand new ways to, like, for me to think about things, but also, like, on how to create media, and I think that's really, really important, and I try to keep it as you-focused as possible because you are the ones who constantly teach me throughout every single one of our uh, meetings and that kind of stuff. Like, I have the information, but you are you are fully doing the learning, and that's what I think is so cool, and that's what, I don't know, that's probably my favorite part of the whole year. <laughs> what do you think uh, are your plans for next year of CCTV? Well, you know, I hope that there's more interns. <laughs> I hope that we can make more projects, have more projects be going out to all our fans out there at Town Meeting TV. And then, um, so I don't know, stay, keep a lookout for all the neighborhood media intern projects because you all have some great ideas, you know, <laughs> like, and you'll be coming up with some, you'll be coming up with some cool things that I'm excited to edit and excited to get out there. Um, do you have any like specific favorite memories of this year? Oh, I really, really, oh, I really liked it when we did our, um, well, more recently, our Prop 2 and Prop 5 stand-up interviews, um, mainly because I didn't know what we were going to find um, about Burlingtonians um, and that kind of stuff. But you all learned the material really quickly and then applied it and was able to conduct really, really insightful interviews really, really quickly. And then that just, I don't know, that just really made me feel good because it made me like, it made me one, have more faith in y'all and two, like really realize that like, hey, y'all can do it. And I don't know, it just made me very excited. <laughs> 
What were some of the challenges of CCTV this year? Um, you know, <laughs> you know, it's I guess there's not really any challenges that I would say besides, you know, tech issues are always arising and are always a challenge. But, you know, it was a very busy year. We had two elections. We had the midterms as well. And then on top of that, I have brand new as the internship coordinator for this program as well. So really adjusting and learning how to do that. Um, and also learning for the first time, learning how to teach and have interns that and like ha keep the projects coming and coming up with ways to teach people and show people different niches and different um, really nuanced discussions that we have been having and I love them so <laughs> well thank you so much and next we will have chance get over here you're interviewing people mm. Mm. Welcome, Kelly. Kim, Kim, Kim. Welcome, Kim. Hi, my name is Chase, and then I'm here to interview you today. That's great. Thanks for being here. Mm. We will miss you, like, cause yeah, you're living. You was a good master controls, like here's. Yeah, mm, tell us some more, like, what are you going to do, like, in futures for now? Yeah, um, I'm going to, I have a job and I'm going to take in Montpelier. That's where I moved and lived now. Um, and then I'm going to be working on my own business and building that. So I'm really excited about what the future holds. So do you mean you're going to continue to do the same thing or is just like something else? Yeah, so I'm going to be working in copy editing, which is similar in a lot of ways to master control, but also different. Oh, okay. I think we will miss you. So this is my things I'm going to give you for today. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Chance. You're welcome. You look so cute. Next up, we got Olivier interviewing Sarah. Come on up here. Hello, everybody. My name is Olivier, and I'm here with Sarah from Vermont Language Project. Can you tell us more about your, like, what you do and the experience working in? Oh yes, so I came on in August and I'm so happy to be here. Um, I, do a lot of oh, I do a lot of production um, and get the videos and the audio ready for all the 15 languages that we translate health messaging into. Um, some of our translators are here tonight and Allison, our director. And yeah, it's been a great Five months being here, and I'm happy to be at CCTV. Wow, 15 language, that's that's crazy. Mm -hmm. So, what are some of like uh, the difficult things that you go through a lot, like translating? Because that's a lot. I'm not doing the translating. We have um, 15 trusted community members that do the translating, and they send us in the audio, and then I put the audio with whatever video clip we're doing for that. Mm -hmm. Oh wow, is it always easy like to find them, or sometimes kind of hard to find? that people to translate? Um, it's been the same 15 translators since the beginning almost. And so for two and a half years. Wow. Mm -hmm. enough. Well, you, you also said that you've been working for five months, right? Mm -hmm. uh, what's something that you will hope to maybe change, that to improve? Um, I'm hoping to just get faster and more efficient. And I'm excited to keep meeting people in the community. I've met so many people. And um, it's been really nice. And so I'm just I'm looking forward to that and excited to um, keep learning things. Wow! Well, thank you so much. That's nice meeting you. Thank you. All so right, much. here's a happy Merry Christmas gift. Thank you so much. All right, much. good one. Thanks. All right. Well, next person. All right. All right. Hello, my name is Olivia, and I'm here with Jordan. And sadly, is leaving us this year. Olivia, let's move. We got uh, a slide over. All right. I think we're good now. Yeah, we're good. Can you yeah. tell us a little bit about your experience working at CCTV? Um, I have loved working here at CCTV. 
Um, I started here as a volunteer. I started here coming with a, like just in a class, in a college class, and um, I loved it, sort of volunteering, and I've stayed ever since, and I've just kept doing more stuff. And um, it's a great place to be. It's a great place to work, and uh, I'm gonna miss everybody. Wow, miss you too. Wait, how long have you been working at CCTV? Four years. Four years. Wow. Yeah. Uh, my second question is, uh, since you've been working for four years and you're also living, what's something that you wish like to improve, like what they can improve here from your experience working here? At uh, I mean, there's there's always more to do in democracy and accessibility, and um, bringing you know the government and bringing uh, you know civic literacy to the public. There's always more to do. Um, we have lots of like new people coming in with a lot of cool creative ideas and so it's always just like keep keep on bringing on new ideas and new projects and um, also yeah. for your four year did you have like a main job that you can actually talk about that you, you that, that was, what was your main job assistant sure I was uh, I was the channel coordinator uh, production coordinator so I managed all of the video and audio production um, for the station. I started out as a field producer, um, just going out to municipal meetings and filming, um, you know, filming Burlington City Council, South Burlington City Council, that kind of thing. Stayed on through the pandemic and then uh, did a lot of the scheduling and management and training and all that kind of thing over the last two years or so. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, I was going to ask, like, when did you, like, start loving making a video and all that? Was it like when you were young or is that something that you end up figuring out when you grow up? Uh, high school. It was in high school. I um, I didn't. I really enjoyed doing projects by just making a funny video, um, and I found that that was a really good way to get a good grade on a on a project. And so I started making those, and I really fell in love with doing that. And then I had some mentors, uh, Jim Shields. I'll call out Jim Shields. Um, said like, hey, you could keep doing this. You could do this for a job. So. I kept wow. Going. Well, good luck in your future, man. I'll miss you, Jordan. Too, wait, wait, wait for one, one more thing. Yeah. All right, Merry Christmas, man. All right, thank you, Olivia. All right, have a good one. Yeah, sure. All right, who's next? Me. All right. <laughs> next, I will be interviewing community producer Sandy Baird. Hello. Nice to meet you. Interviewing me. Of course, of course. So I know you're a community producer. Um, what has been your favorite show you've produced this year, or one of your favorites? The other night we produced a show with young black American girls who are advocating for the abolition of the incarceration of women and girls, and that was my favorite show that we produced this year. The woman that we worked with, the young woman that we worked with, was a woman from Burlington, from a uh, African-American family in Burlington. Um, by the name of Kalia Livingston, and she was brilliant, and she's the head of a organization, a national org organization, that is hoping to end the incarceration of women and girls, and probably ultimately the abolition of all prisons, which is a very interesting and controversial idea, but it was, that's my favorite. Yep. And um, what are you hoping for next year? More community television, more public access, more citizens participating in journalism, essentially, and a journalism that could change the world. Um, what are some shows that you're planning to produce over the next year? Well, in the next, in the spring, um, I'm going to produce with Dan Higgins, a longtime contributor to CCTV, a show on Nicaragua. Um, I will probably do a show on the migration of Cubans from Havana into the United States. I am going to do a show interviewing the chief of police here in Burlington about whether or not there are rising crime rates and what sh we should do about it here in Burlington. So a blend of local issues, international issues as well. How do you think that local journalism like this can shape the world? Kidding, it's the only thing that can shape the world because it represents the grassroots views of citizens. And really, when you're talking about big media, they don't represent us, the little people. But when you have something like this that's run by citizens, that'll, that is what's different about it because that gives us the view of ordinary people. Wow, well, it's an incredible experience talking with you. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> of course. 
Oh, and uh, thank you for the interview. Thank you. <laughs> Pin that on. Next, oh, Maga Prince. <laughs> Next up, we got Chance interviewing someone. Hit it. Mm, welcome, Dan. Hi, Dan. I'm coming to interview you today. So, we hope to see you here. And what was your favorite place to doing things for the cameras? Um, I guess my favorite thing would be, um, well, I love volunteering here because, uh, you know, basically everyone's like a family. And um, you know all the staff are really nice, and um, I I love running cameras. I used to do um, before this. I worked at a TV studio in uh, Bell's Falls, Vermont, named uh, Fact TV, and I ran cameras there for about a year. And then when I moved up here, I wanted to get more involved in camera work. And um, so I started volunteering like two years ago, and I've been happy ever since. Okay, so we have your gifts for a Merry Christmas. So, yeah, it's nice to meet you, and yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Who's next? Uh, Navarro. Navarro's. Is that what I think it is? Yes, it is. We're about to interview Irene Renner, Senator of Vermont. Hi. Good, man. How's it hanging, Irene Renner? I'm doing great, thanks. What a wonderful party this is. It's so nice. Thank you. May I just say it's so nice to come to Channel 17 and not have that pit in my stomach, know I'm going to be on camera very soon and I'm going to be asked questions by a moderator and be up against fellow candidate um, candidates in an election. It, this is this is really nice to just come and party. Well, I just want to ask you, how was your year? It was a very exciting year. They redrew the map, so there were new districts to run for and I chose to run for one of them. Mm -hmm. And um, what are your plans for next year? I'm going to be sworn in as the new Chittenden North Senator on January 4th, and I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a whole new adventure. What's some um, legislation you're excited about imposing? <laughs> Not imposing, but putting in place over your course. Um, I, I don't want to go in with any preconceived notions. I know that people in my district are concerned about keeping the land and water resources looking like they belong in Vermont. We've had a lot of development in many areas. And I hope that we can keep the housing that we are going to build in dense areas where there already is sewer and water services. I'm in a really rural district. We want to keep it looking rural. And we also want to work on affordability for folks. A lot of folks are hurting with all the inflation that we've had recently. So um, those are the concerns I heard on the streets. And so those will be my priorities. Um, what has been one of your favorite memories working in politics this year? Uh, going door to door. I knocked on doors for six months in a very beautiful region, and I got to discover parts of all four towns that I'd never seen. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, thank you so much for talking with me, and um, here's a pin. Thank you so much for your uh, microprints. Where did I put it? Oh, yeah. Thank you so much for talking with Thanks, us, girl. and yeah, have a nice night. <laughs> Enjoy the party. Right. Next up. We got Olivier. All right, Olivier is back again, and with my guy Michael here. Hey. Hi, Michael. How's it going? Good. You? Good. Uh, my first question is, uh, can you tell us a little about your experience working remotely? Yeah. So uh, basically, I just uh, am able to check in. Uh, we have meetings um, at 1 p.m. this time. I'm over on the West Coast. I'm over on the West Coast, so I have to like figure out the time difference. But overall, it's pretty seamless. Like I get the video files uploaded to Dropbox, and then I pull them down and edit them on Premiere. Do you feel like you're more connected to the job? Like do you actually feel like you're actually working? 
Yeah, I definitely get to like check in with everyone over Slack, and every time we do a like Zoom meeting for the staff, it's really fun to just like catch up with everyone and see how everyone's been doing. Wow, and how long have you been working on CCTV? Oh, geez, I started volunteering in 2017, so I guess probably five years. <laughs> okay, also, I have another question. Like about just video in, in general. Yeah. Is it like something you, you like wanted to do when you were a guy in high school and like when you were a kid, or is that something you, you got to growing up? Yeah, uh, I guess the first time with videos, uh, me and my sister fixed the family camcorder, and so we just started making like skits of just like funny comedy stuff. So I've always been enjoying that, and that's what I'm going to keep doing, I guess. <laughs> and what is your experience being here today? Being here, flew in for the holidays, and um, got to see all my coworkers, some for the first time in person. <laughs> oh, wow. All right. Thank you so much, man. Yeah. It was nice having you, and I got something for you. Oh, oh. oh I got it. All right. Merry Christmas. Oh, man. Thanks. All right. Good one. Hey. All right. Chance is next. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Welcome, Albi. Mm, hi. Hello. My name is Chance. Chance, good to see you. Mm -hmm. Mm. Today I'm coming to asking you a question. What was your favorite memory from this year's? All right, thank you for the question. Uh, to tell the truth, um, if I want to talk about my favorite memory uh, in this place, is when I came over here to talk about my music because I'm a musician, I'm a music man. I was on the platform right here to talk about the kind of music that I deal with. I deal with the rumba, uh, rumba music. I come from Congo. Then I wanted to uh, let people from Vermont that there's somebody here in Vermont who's uh, promoting and who's dealing with uh, the Congolese music that is called the rumba. And I was very happy to answer all questions that were asked to me by uh, uh, Jordan Berryfield. How did you feel when they welcome you here? Well, to tell the truth, this place is very welcoming. Uh, uh, most of the people that work uh, on, um, I mean, here, they are very good people. Uh, they are very caring and uh, they, they give you answers on every question you ask them. So they are very good people. So there's a good crew right here to tell the truth. Okay, thank you so much. It was nice to meeting you. Yeah. This is your gift for Merry you. Christmas. Nice meeting you too. Nice to meet you too. Welcome, Lovarius. Boom. What's good? Come up, our next contestant on the interview game. So what's what's your name? My name is Barry Silver. Yeah. What else do you want to know about me? What was your favorite memory of working at CCTV this year? Oh my gosh. So um, so I worked for CCTV and Town Meeting TV since 2015. And then um, my time ended in September of this year because um, I'm now teaching at Champlain College. So I was here for a while. And I mean, not as long as Lauren Glenn, obviously, or Megan or some of the other long-term people. But... Um, what was my favorite memory? I don't know. I love seeing people like you come through the station and do amazing things and um, really help the community understand why community media is so important and how valuable a resource it is for young people, people of all ages and stages, um, so, and people who care about democracy. So. Yeah, those are things. Thank you. And um, what are your plans for next year? I know you're working at Champlain now. Yeah, so I'm, um, so this is interesting. So I'm teaching two classes at Champlain. Uh, one is legal issues and communication. And actually, Emily Brewer from CCTV has come as a special guest. Hopefully, she'll come back again. Shay Totten, who's on the CCTV board, I believe, has also been a guest speaker. Uh, Lauren Glenn has been a guest speaker. So I'm, I, I want um, my students to stay connected to the resources that we have in this community like CCTV, Town Meeting TV, and the Media Factory down in the South End. Um, and then also um, I'm going to be uh, teaching an internship 
class. So I'll be working with interns. So that was something that I used to do as part of my job here at CCTV. Um, so I'll be sitting on the other side of the desk, or as they say, and I'll be working with interns um, and maybe placing interns here at CCTV. So, yeah. And uh, my last question, more varied is, uh, we're whatever, um, is why do you think that community journalism is important? I think it's so important because we need to make room for all voices in our um, community and, uh, you know, community journalism is independent. Um, it is uh, just, I don't know, really important for us to have an alternative to corporate media um, so that all of us can be informed about what's happening in the world around us. So, Thank you. It was lovely to talk with Good you. And I hope you have a fun party. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Next up, we're having Olivier talking with Jane. Hi, I'm Olivier's back again, and I'm here with Jane, our longest, uh, bo uh, what? Boring member. Or, okay, okay. So, was was CCTV very important to you? Yeah. I first, I want to thank you for not saying I'm the oldest board member. That's what I was about to say. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, why is CCTV important to you? Yeah. Well. I was an elected official. I was on the Burlington City Council, and that was my entry into the world of CCTV, because that's how the public found out what we were doing at their meetings. You know, and instead of reading in the newspaper, they could actually watch the whole meeting and know for themselves what happened and what they think about it. You know what I mean? So basically, you are working for the city council, and you thought maybe you'll be much better if the people can actually get to see what's going on and that will end up making you work for CCTV? Yeah, so that, you know, I thought I'd like to support this organization because what they're doing is so important in terms of getting information out to people. And I'm a big believer in people making up their own minds about things. Me too. Right? Yeah. Uh, and then, but then you need information. Yeah, that's you. You know, you need to be in, you know, edu be educated about the issues and then decide whether you like what they did or not, you know? Wait, how long have you been working with CCTV? I've been on 10 years on the board. Wow, 10 yeah. years. Uh, and also, can you tell us a little bit about how you feel everybody being here together for today? Yeah, I mean, this is a great gathering, and they always bring people. It's such a mixed group, you know what I mean? And so in that sense, you get a sense of, you know, this is our community, you know? It's like it's diverse, but we are coming together around an important institution. Well, I'll also ask you another question. Since you've been working here for 10 years, what is something that you will wish to improve or like yourself you're working on mm. to try to improve you? Yeah. Well, I was the person who looked at, who kind of covered the, the finances. Mm -hmm. You know, on, I was the treasurer on the board. So I think that, you know, maybe I would think more about other ways to kind of present the budget, you know, or to kind of make it a little more alive and interesting because it's just numbers on a sheet, right? Mm -hmm. So how can we make that come alive and like really explain, you know, why it matters that we're financially healthy? It is very healthy. And also for me, do you feel like you get more, do you guys get like more support from the community? Because the only reason you work here is because to help the community. Do you feel like you get the same thing back? From oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and I recommend, I'm getting off the board now, but you know, if other, there is openings on the board, so if people are interested in being on the board, they should, you know, come. Yeah, please come outside and get a job. Well, okay. thank you so much for having thank you today. Thank you very much. I I enjoy the interview. I got one more thing for you today. Okay. <laughs> well, Merry Christmas. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, no problem. Uh, My husband will be jealous. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. My boy. Navarro. Navarro is back in the zone, and we are talking to the curly-headed master of, what is it you do? Uh, development director. And what is your name? Bobby Lucier. Nice to see you, Navarro. Nice to see you, too. What has been your favorite memory of working at Town Meeting TV this year? Oh, boy. Um, well, election day has been, was really fun, and I know you were part of that, too. We went out and interviewed voters and uh, heard from them about 
uh, issues like the Burlington High School bond and um, some of the important constitutional amendments on the ballot this year and heard about the candidates that people were excited about and uh, that was really fun. I liked that. What were some of your thoughts on the election? What were some of my thoughts on the election? Um, well, it was a really historic election. I think there was a lot of uh, there were a lot of new legislators at the state house in Vermont, and there's uh, you know a shakeup in the congressional delegation in Vermont, and that's that's pretty exciting to see. So, uh, just seeing new voices involved in Vermont's democracy is really exciting to me, and um, it's exciting to be a part of the work that brings those voices, um, you know, up, uh, to uh, to the voters. And um, what are your plans for the future? What are my plans for the future? Uh, well, I am planning on working at CCTV, uh, Center for Media and Democracy, and um, I really enjoy living in Burlington and, and want to uh, stick around here and, and be a part of the really, uh, really interesting political culture here in Burlington. So that's my plan for the future. What's your plan for the future, Navarro? Dying in the water wars. What are your thoughts on uh, when we start running out of water? Uh, when do you think that'll happen? Is that going to happen soon? I'm thinking 2080. 2080. You think you'll be around for 2080? Oh, yeah. Okay, I don't know. I don't plan on being around in 2080, so. No, no, wait. 2180. No, wait, what is this year? What is this year? 2022. 20. Oh, it would be. <laughs> wait. No, it would be 20. You don't think you're going to be around for 2080? No, I would be I would be 83. That would be pretty pretty up there for me, I think. Or do you like do a lot of alcohol and drugs? No. Why would you die so quickly? No, no, no. no. Uh, <laughs> uh, I guess I'm intimidated by the question. The water wars sound sound like a big topic that I'm that I'm not ready to to comment on yet. But. What about the wonders of modern medicine? Like I think I think I'll live like to 110 whether I like it or not. Yeah, I think that sounds about right. You you strike me as someone who could make it to 110. Um, I'm you know I'm feeling less confident in my abilities, but I'm glad that you feel so so confident. Uh, what are your thoughts on fellow curly-haired man Jack Harlow? I uh, haven't had a chance to meet him, but I hope he's doing well. And uh, thank you so much for talking with me. He's out of the job. Get out of here. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> Next up, we got Olivier interviewing someone else. Yay, let's go. Hello, Olivier's back again, and we're here with Tamir himself. Hi. Hi, how's it going? It's going great. It's good to be with you. Happy happy holidays. Yeah, happy holidays. Uh, my first question I was going to ask, what's something that really went well in your job this year? Something that went well? Mm -hmm. Well, um, we, we got a lot of... Big, these big capital projects that we've been working on for years and years. Uh, we had some real milestones with them this year. We had uh, Amtrak come back to Burlington for the first time in something like 70 years. The, this big highway project that's been this unresolved issue for a long time is in construction, the Champlain Parkway. We got the, the Moran frame. Wow. Uh, I was just down there, just before coming here, I was at another holiday party down on the waterfront. There was a Hanukkah party yeah. at the Moran frame, which is been this big question in the community for decades. What are we going to do with this old coal coal burning plant down on the waterfront? Seems like we should be doing something great with it. We finally have, have resolved that, gotten rid of that kind of eyesore. It's a, quite a beautiful space, and I think in the years ahead, it's uh, it's going to be uh, a place where we have a lot of events like this, uh, arts and and uh, entertainment events. So we got, we got a lot built and a lot moved forward this year. Wow, that makes me really happy seeing a lot of things that you guys done. Uh, awesome. Also, well, it's about the end of the year. What are some goals that you're trying to improve from the next year coming up? For next year? Well, you know, we certainly are, um, I think in 2022, one of the challenging things about 2022 was the uh, the public safety uh, concerns that, that we faced. You know, we had this unprecedented number of uh, gunfire incidents, a large number of more homicides than we'd seen in many years, and, and, and we're, you know, really this challenging period for the police department. Certainly, as we look ahead to 23, I am hopeful that we're bringing that spike of violence to an end. We're going to start talking about the ways, how, how do we make sure that something like this doesn't happen again? And uh, I, I certainly hope 23 is a year of progress. I'm feeling some momentum in the rebuilding of the police department, and I hope that we see uh, some real progress on that in 23. Uh, wait, how long have you been working for me? Why, 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 why are you going to now? 
you know, it's uh, kind of amazing to, to me how long it's been going on. It's, I, this, I'm almost done with my 11th year. So wow. I've been, in, been elected four times. This is my fourth three-year term. Wow. And, uh, you know, almost two, two-thirds of the way through this. Wow, that's crazy. Uh, I was also going to ask that. How long have you been doing this for? Uh, oh, ownership? This is my third year now. I started when I was a fresh, freshman. Oh, that's great. Yeah, uh, I was going to ask also, well, being a mayor is a big job. So is it like something that you wanted to do, like uh, maybe when you were young, or like uh, is it something that just you came up when you were growing up? I, you know, I was lucky to grow up in a family where we we had dinner together most nights. Um, my mom and dad, and I had two siblings, and a lot of most nights we would talk about current events, politics, uh, what was going on in the world. And so I think uh, from a pretty young age, I did kind of have this sense that politics mattered and government jobs matter. And this, uh, it's some way you can have a, a positive impact on the world is by uh, working for government. So I, I don't think I knew I was going to be uh, the mayor exactly, well, but it's certainly something that I, uh, yeah. I, 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 I did always sort of have my, I think maybe I could contribute through public service in some way. Well, I was going to ask, what's some advice you can give to a kid who just maybe wish to be a mayor when they grow up? Well, you know, what you're doing with an intern is, is a, if, if you're interested in government service, that's a, a great thing to think about when you're in high school or college. More and more, you know, like the city has paid internships where you can come and uh, experience what it's like to be in, in public service. That's how I got started. Wow, that's was, very cool. Uh, I was an intern in Senator Leahy's office. Uh. 30 years ago. Well, 30. Like you can actually see what he's doing and stuff? Uh, yeah, I was in the D.C. office. I opened mail, and I uh, got to do some other kind of cool research projects. And, wow, that's and, really uh, cool. It was great to be part of that office. It really, that, I, I don't think I'd be doing this if I hadn't had that experience. So I think young people really looking for those internship opportunities. More and more organizations uh, understanding that for these opportunities to be available to everybody, we really need to pay a stipend for that. There's a lot of paid internships around. Um, and I guess the other thing I would say is a lot of people, even if they think maybe they want to go into public service, they think about the White House, they think about Congress, they think about the federal government, maybe the state government. They don't think about local government often. And I got to tell you, local government is uh, where it is, it's, it's the closest level to our communities, the people. It's where, in some ways, you can have the most direct impact on people. Yeah, lives. like you actually work with the people in your community. Yeah, very much so. So uh, I would say, if you're thinking you might want to be involved in in public service in some way, think about think about local government. Think about the city of Burlington. Wow. Well, thank you so much. Nice having you today. Yeah, Happy great holiday with you. You too. All Take right, care. Yeah. Good luck to you. All right. Chance is back in. Uh, yeah. mm. Mm. Hi, we welcome Jordan. Welcome. Hi. Hi, nice to see you. Nice to see you too. My name is Chance, and I want to interview today. What was your things you was doing this year, and then for next year, what are you going to do? Yeah, so part of my job is the archiving, and the other part of the job is the production. Uh, and so this year it was a lot of uh, really big developments with our archiving work. We got a lot of archiving digitization done. We're halfway through, which is a really exciting milestone. And as we head into the new year, I think uh, a big goal is bringing on a lot more community producers and really bringing the community back into the studio um, to just create more content. For the first time you get here, how did you feel like to be welcome here? Yeah, it's always uh, always a very welcoming environment here. And when I first came in and first started working here, everyone was always so welcoming. You know, the staff, the community, you know, the interns and students, um, and just happy to see that continuing. And you know, it only gets better as I get to know people. It was nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm, who's next? Oliver's back again. All right, Olivia's back again, and here. We were, we are with Andrew. Hey man, what's happening, man? Good to have nice you. Nice to you. Too. All right. What's happening? All right. So can you tell me? Oh wait, actually, how are you today? Okay. What camera? Where am I at? That here? camera. Yeah, you get here. Okay. Do I have to talk in that? Yeah. So what's up? How are you today? This is a hell of a party. <laughs> um, I'm having a good time. I have a, a a show about politics, democratic politics. Mm -hmm. I reach out to a lot of younger people, new Americans, mm -hmm. people living in town to register them to vote. Are wow. you registered to vote? Well, I wish, but I'm not 18 yet. When do you turn 18? Uh, in two years. Okay, we're gonna, so, Emily? <laughs> um, my friend Emily out here, the producer, the line producer tonight. Thank you, Emily. Well, 
I would like to tell people mm. that um, it is so easy to register to vote. Mm. I am a very passionate Democrat, but we're not talking about that tonight. We're talking about public service. Mm. Uh, also, um, town meeting day is only a couple months away, mm. and that's when we'll vote on city council and on city issues. Uh. Let's tell me a little about yourself before I go. Well, I go to BHS. Yeah, Seahorses. Uh, yeah, Seahorses. I play soccer. Okay. Who's your friend over here? Ah, uh, my friend Chance. Yeah, come right, in. Come on out. Come here. in, Chance. Come on. How you doing? Thank nice you. to see you. Mm, my name hear, is let me, Chance, let me hear it. and yeah. I go to BHS too. Hi. Nice yeah. to meet you. Nice to meet you. Well, I have a question too. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about your your job and your experience working in the community? Yes. Uh, I work a lot of times as in politics, uh, registering voters, working on political campaigns, primarily, primarily Democratic. Mm -hmm. And uh, I lived in the old North End for about 27 years. Wow, 27 yeah, years. for a long time. Yeah. And uh, now, wh where do you live? Old North End? Uh, actually, I live like right here, awesome. like one minute away from here. Uh, my other question. Is there any place like the old North End? No way. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, my other question is. Oh, I have a question for you. Okay, okay. Tell me what you're doing this summer. Well, this summer, I don't know, probably working on like getting rid of colleges. Just trying Excellent. to trying to check out some colleges, like where I can go after high school. Okay. That that's my big plan. Okay. And soccer too, yeah. Play a lot. Of, yeah, a lot of soccer. Yeah. Play a lot of soccer and work on taking your SATs and stuff. Yes. You got to study for those. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I need to be on any longer. I, I can be, or are we gonna go back to someone else here? Or. Well, well, it was nice having you today. Have a good. Wait, I got one one thing for you. All right. Happy holiday, man. Oh, thank you so much. All right, no problem. Good. I'm going to put this on. All right. Thanks. Nice meeting you. All right. I just want to thank everybody at Town Meeting TV, and this is a great Halloween party. Thank you, Emily. Thank you, Megan. Thank you. Um, I, good luck. You studying hard? Yes. You too? Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, all right. No problem. All right. All right. I'm going to sneak on here really quick. Yeah, all right. And um, we've got a couple more interviews here before we wrap up the um, our a live holiday awards show and um, <laughs> next we have um, next we have uh, Lily who um, is one of the translators for the Vermont Language Justice Project and if you'd like to come right on up that would be wonderful Allison you want to come too all right so we spoke to Sarah earlier a little bit about the Vermont Language Justice Project um, but I um, if Allison wants to do a quick overview, and then we'll we'll talk about your experience as a translator. Oh, okay. So uh, I'm the director of the Vermont Language Justice Project, and um, we employ 14 translators to um, <clears throat> translate our, our scripts that we write, and uh, we put them together on a video, and then put them out on YouTube, and they're on all subjects to do with health and health-related topics. And probably in January or February of this year, we were asked by a lot of people to include Mandarin as one of our languages. We hadn't at that point used Mandarin. And so uh, my friend Weiwei told me all about Lily here, who um, is a good friend and is an excellent interpreter and translator. And so we started working with Lily to, um, to do videos, uh, audio content in Mandarin for us. So, Lily, what was that? Ex can you tell us a little bit about what that experience was like? Um, was it? Did you find it difficult to translate the messages um, into Mandarin? Um, uh, yeah, we'll start there. Uh, I really enjoy it because I've been doing uh, translation and interpreting for the past twenty years. I did a lot of interpreting at uh, uh, UVMC and also. Dartmouth Hitchhart Medical Center, Community Health Center, Fanny Allen Hospital, and the local courts in Vermont. So I really enjoyed it. So I, I'm so glad to work with Allison. He, she's so wonderful. And when I started working with this uh, program, I really feel you, you, know, you can have a direct touch with the Chinese community. Because after I translate, I and uh, share with them, uh, send each message to them, they all respond. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's really nice because I think the voice translation goes so fast to the Chinese community. 
and the people really enjoy because everybody has different education background. You know, if uh, sometimes they don't have much time to read translation, but they can hear the voice. Mm. Yeah, and a lot of my, you know, like uh, Chinese people work in the uh, restaurant, they're really busy, they work very hard, you know, work a lot of hours and work like um, 365 days only one day off. Mm. So, so once you send a voice there, they can really listen and they really, you know, COVID-19 and get catch up where to get a vaccine and how to test yourselves and how to protect yourself. They really enjoy it, really appreciate it. So that's, I think, it's really touched my heart. And they always, when I share with them, they always get back to me, say thank you. So thank you, Alison. Oh, you're so welcome. Yeah. So glad we're doing this. Well, yes, and thank you for um, saying that because I think it's really important to hear um, how um, the project impacts local communities. And um, it, it really is, um, it's very heartfelt um, to hear that um, it's making an impact. Um, and, and also I want to say, <coughs> because not, you know, in Vermont, not only in the Berlin, the Venusky, Colchester, and also some of the Chinese living in Montpelier, mm -hmm. Westfield, Waterbury, and uh, like uh, Randolph, so can share with them, you know, it's yeah. really they That's enjoy it, you know, the whole so families. You know, sometimes family have five, six people, grandparents, parents, and the kids. The, they can hear, they can listen, they can go to the vaccine to get their vaccinated. So I think that's really nice. And sometimes they come to me, they say, where can we get vaccinated? How should we schedule the appointment? Where's the location? So I think it's really reach out the message. Well, we thank you very much for being a part of this really important project and um, for um, being a voice for the local community um, throughout Vermont and beyond. And um, we look forward to continuing to work with you in the future to um, get more messages out in Mandarin as well. So thank you, thank you for thank you. being yeah, here. Thank, thank you, you. <laughs> thank you both. Um, yeah, that was great. That was wonderful. Thank you. All right, perfect. I'm going to bring Navarro back on stage, and um, we're going to do a couple more interviews, and then we'll wrap up. So I'm going to hand the mic back to you. Last up. Our last interview for the night. We got who we got? Elanus. Where are they? Come on, come on, Elanus. Where are you? Where are you? I need you. I need to interview you, Elanus. Please, please come with me. Come with me. Where? Where? Technical difficulties. <laughs> You're so funny. Elaine's coming right over, and then we're gonna we're, we'll wrap up our show. I there's still quite a crowd here. It's very exciting. Here comes Elaine, right on over. I'm gonna hand the mic back to you. Hello, Elaine. Hi, how are you? Great. How are you? I am doing great. It's wonderful to be here amongst the CCTV family. <laughs> and what has been your favorite uh, memory this year with the CCTV family? Well, I have been involved with CCTV for a really long time, and I was off of the board, the trustee board, for a long time, and I was invited back to come to the CCTV board, and I'm thrilled to be back. I love CCTV and everybody I work with, and I'm, we're doing great work, so I'm really happy to be here. So that's my favorite memory, is just like coming back. <laughs> and uh, what are your plans for next year? As part of CCV, CCTV, I am... Um, chair of the board and we are working together with the staff to um, do some really big transitions and to continue supporting the amazing work we do like the archive project and the uh, language justice project so I'm really looking forward to expanding all of those great programs and keeping us strong. So why do you think community journalism is important? Because if we don't tell our own stories they go away and hyper local news coverage is essential because stories are important in neighborhoods and in small towns and with the disappearance of local papers and the lack of coverage of substantive local issues throughout the media in Vermont we need to tell our stories as much as possible and the people who are involved in them should be the ones who tell those stories and that's why community media is so important. Why do you think archival work is valuable? 
It's our history. You know, when whenever Bernie Sanders does something on the national stage, CCTV gets phone calls looking for archival footage of Bernie as mayor. It's our history. We have hundreds of thousands of hours of, of Chittenden County and Burlington history in our vault. And we want to be able to have it available to people so that they can learn their own local history and is recent, you know, since we've begun. It's an essential resource for everybody, not just for us locally, but for history and for local media who need to use those resources. It's a very, very important archive. Well, it's been a pleasure talking with you, and thank you so much. So much. <laughs> to another Happy year solstice. with CCTV. Happy solstice. Wow. It's been a wonderful night. We've laughed. We've cried. We've talked up a storm with so many amazing personalities from all over the CCTV staff and Burlington community members. And I will be talking with you throughout next year as my internship continues. And I am being told to wrap it up. Au revoir.